The translation operator in quantum mechanics allow us to rigidly shift the wave packet in position X and momentum P. In this video, we will learn why the translation operators are written in the form as shown, and the different signs in their exponent for spatial and momentum forward translation. We will also discuss the spatial and momentum translation operation on the ket, bra and the wave functions, and end with a concrete example using the Gaussian wave packet. Part 1. Spatial Translation Let's begin with the position operator x, which when acted on the position eigenstate x ket, will produce the eigenvalue x multiplies by x ket. Now, let's consider an operator as shown, and operated on the eigenstate x ket. The exponential is a unitary operator because p is the momentum operator, which is Hermitian. Here, x0 is just a real number. We call this new state vector x prime ket. Now, is x prime ket still an eigenstate of the position operator? We shall find out. Let's operate x prime ket with the position operator as shown. I can multiply on the left by the exponential operator and its inverse, since their product is just the identity. This trio product can be manipulated using the reduced baker campbell hausdorff theorem. The general version of this theorem is shown here, which can be reduced to the simplified form when the commutator of A and B commutes with B, as what we have in our example. With some simple algebra, we can show that the trio product yields us the operator x plus x0. To perform these algebra, we have used the well-known xp commutator relation as shown. Thus, the operator x is being unitarily transformed into x plus x0. Alternatively, we can also say that x is being translated by an amount x0. Acting on the x ket, we can replace the operator x with its eigenvalue x. Finally, we recognize the x prime ket. Thus, we have established that x prime ket is also an eigenstate of the position operator, with the eigenvalue x plus x0. Thus, the operator, exponential minus i p x0 divide by h bar, is actually the translation operator. We shall label this operator as t, where its argument x0 denotes the amount of translation. The translation operator transformed the eigenstate x ket to the eigenstate x plus x0 ket. The latter is also an eigenstate of the position operator, but has the eigenvalue x plus x0. Part 2. Spatial Translation. The Bra Version. It will be a good exercise to repeat the derivations for the Bra Version. We start by taking the adjoint of the equations for the ket counterpart. Note the sign in the exponent for the translation operator, which is now plus instead of minus. Will it translates the eigenstate by positive or negative x0? Let's find out. Let's operate the x prime bra with the position operator. I employ the same trick, by multiplying the right with the translation operator and its inverse. Making use again the baker campbell hausdorff theorem, we can rewrite this trio product as the translated version of the position operator as shown. Namely, it transformed the operator x into x plus x0. Thus, the x prime bra diagonalizes the position operator x, with the eigenvalues x plus x0. Great! Let's recap. For the x ket, the operator exponential minus i p x0 over h bar translates the position eigenstate to x plus x0 ket. For the bra, to perform the translation of the eigenstate from x to x plus x0, we need to flip the sign of the exponent for the translation operator as shown. It is actually easy to see why this is the case. We can begin with the translation equation for the ket, and take the adjoint. The adjoint for the product can then be taken separately after swapping their order. The adjoint of the ket turns into bra, and the adjoint of the translation operator flips the sign of the exponent. This has to be equal to x plus x0 bra, as required by the left-hand side of the equation. Thus, 
The two translation operations for the bra and ket are actually the same identities related via the adjoint operation. We say that they are dual of one another, just like ket is the dual of bra. Part 3. Momentum Translation We have seen that the spatial translation operator is an exponential function of the momentum operator. Thus, we say the momentum is the generator of spatial translation. Now, if we want to generate a momentum translation, then it is reasonable to expect that the generator in this case will be the position operator. With this in mind, let's start with the momentum operator P, which when acted on the momentum eigenstate P ket, will produce the eigenvalue P multiplies by P ket. By analogy, we can cook up the momentum translation operator using the position operator as the generator in the exponent. Let's see if the new P prime ket produces the desired result. We begin by acting the momentum operator on the P prime ket. Again, we multiply on the left by the translation operator and its inverse. Taking the trio product and simplifying it with the reduced baker campbell hausdorff identity, we arrived at the following with the momentum operator displaced by P0, where we also makes use of the XP commutator relation. The momentum operator acting on the P ket will then yields us the eigenvalue P. Indeed, P prime ket is the eigenstate of the momentum operator, whose eigenvalue is P plus P0. To summarize, the momentum translation operator is given as follows, with the position operator X being the generator of the translation. Note also the plus sign in the exponent, contrary to the minus for the spatial translation counterpart. This momentum translation operator translates the momentum eigenstate from the P to the P plus P0 eigenstate. To summarize, we note the interesting relationship of how the position operator is the generator of momentum translation and vice versa, and the difference in the sign of the exponent in the translation operators. One more point before we wrap up this chapter. Consider generating an infinitesimal spatial translation of amount delta x. The exponential function can then be expressed in its Taylor expansion up to the first order in delta x. This then allow us to arrive at the well-known differential form of the momentum operator in position representation. The dual version of this relation for the bra is obtained by taking the adjoint. In similar fashion, one can also obtain the analogous result for the position operator. Consider generating an infinitesimal momentum translation of amount delta p. Going through the similar algebra, we can also arrive at the well-known differential form of the position operator in the momentum representation as shown. Please also check out the other videos in this quantum mechanics playlist for more discussion about the basic concepts on the position and momentum operators and representations. We note that finite transformation can always be constructed from its infinitesimal transformations. The infinitesimal transformation can be expressed in its Taylor form as we used previously. Which from the following mathematical identity allows us to express it in the exponential operator form as shown. The fact that finite translation can always be divided into its end constituents is a consequence that the translation operator is unitary, and all unitary operator can be written in the exponential form. Part 4. Translating Wave Functions So far, we have discussed how the translation operator T translates the bra and ket by an amount alpha as shown. What does this do to the wave functions? That is what we will discuss in this chapter. Let's start by noting that the matrix exponential for the translation operator can be written in its Taylor series sum. Written explicitly, it contains terms with increasing powers in the operator P. Recall that the P operator can be written in terms of the differential in X in the position representation. Acting this with the state vector psi ket on the right, we obtain the expression for the translation operator acting on the wave function, written in terms of differential operators. We immediately see that this is nothing but the definition of the Taylor expansion of the wave function psi x minus alpha. Thus, the translation operator T is defined. Translate the wave function by an amount minus alpha. 
Let's suppose that the original wave function psi x is a Gaussian like packet located at x equals 0. Then the new translated wave function, psi x minus alpha, will be the same Gaussian like packet, but now localized at x equals to alpha. Alternatively, we can also perform the translation operation on the x bra instead of the psi ket. Recall that the translation operator t is stipulated translate the x ket to x plus alpha ket. But when acted on the x bra will translate it to x minus alpha instead. Performing this translation operation on the x bra is shown. It is then straightforward to obtain the translated wave function, which is the same result as obtained earlier. This trick allows us to conveniently perform translation operations in the abstract bra ket notations without getting into the wave equations. You will appreciate how useful this trick is when we discuss topics such as the coherent states in the next video. Certainly, the translation operation should preserve the norm of the wave function, as required by particle conservation. This property is ensured by the fact that the translation operator is unitary. Feel free to pause the video if you would like to inspect the proof. In a nutshell, we have shown how the spatial translation operator faithfully translate the wave function in position coordinate. We also discussed the different ways one can construct the translation operation. One can also derive analogous translation relations for the momentum case. Here, the position operator is the generator of translation and note also the positive sign in the exponent for forward translation. Let's conclude this chapter with a very concrete example using the Gaussian wave packet. The quantum state n is expressed in its wave functions psi x and phi p, which are related via the Fourier transformation. Using what we have just learned, we can use the spatial translation operator to perform a forward translation of the Gaussian packet as shown. Quick and easy. To check that this is mathematically correct, let's first insert the completeness relation using the momentum representation. Using the xp transformation function as highlighted, one can indeed prove that the wave function is indeed forward translated by the amount alpha. Feel free to pause here to inspect the proof. Analogous proof can also be established for the momentum translation case, and we shall leave this for your own inspection. If you find these content useful, Please subscribe and turn on the notification, so you will be notified of our future videos. See you next time.